Hey guys, welcome to Algebra 1. Today we're going to be working on modeling real world situations. Now if you've had some practice translating expressions, you've kind of already got a little bit of a handle on this and you may not have known that. All right, let's take a look and get started. Okay, so a number increased by five. You dealt with situations like that when you were translating expressions, right? Now how would you translate that to something numeric, remember? Okay, I see increase by, so that gave you a hint you were adding. You're increasing some number by five. So you had some practice translating x plus five. All right, let's keep jogging your memory. The product of seven and a number. Okay, you remember product, let you know you were multiplying. So product, seven and a number. Okay, all right. 17 more dollars than Kenny. All right, that's a real world situation. But how you translate something like that is not much unlike how you translate a regular old algebraic expression, okay? Let's keep going and then you'll see how you handle something like that. Step one is you have to decide what you want your variable to represent. Because you've got a real world situation, so you've got to figure out what's your unknown. Step two, identify the key word because that'll let you know what operation you've got to do. Add, subtract, multiply, divide, if you've got an exponent. The key word is what's going to give you a hint on that. And then the final step is to go ahead and write that expression. So remember those three steps. Even write them down if you want. You can even write them like a shortcut little note to yourself. That's going to help us work our way through all of these problems. Let's keep going. All right, example one. Three more points than the other team scored. All right. Now what I don't know in this case is how many points the other team scored. So that's what I'm gonna let my variable represent. And you can pick any letter of the alphabet you want for your variable, it's up to you. A lot of times you'll notice that they'll choose a variable that kind of reminds them of the situation. So for example, the points the other team scored, let me even catch that, it's the points the other team scored. I'm gonna let P represent those points. So P is the points that the other team scored. And there were three more points than that team score. So you remember that more, that told you you were adding. So I have three more points than the other team. You translated that real world situation, three plus P. Or remember, you could have said P plus three. Either one's fine. Okay, let's try the next one. Four years younger than Kendall. Okay. So what I don't know here is how old Kendall is. So that is what my variable is going to represent. I'm going to let K represent Kendall's age. That's my unknown. I have no clue how old Kendall is. But what I do know is I need to represent a situation of four years younger than Kendall. So think about younger, just in the real world. If you're younger than someone, then your age is less than theirs. So remember less than, that told us we were subtracting. So four years less than Kindle. Got Kindle's age, and I need four less than that. So I could represent that K minus four, okay? Are you seeing how it's not that much different than translating expressions? You just have that little extra step of kind of interpreting the situation and deciding what your variable needs to represent. Okay? Sample three. The bill at the restaurant was split evenly four ways. Now, I like to eat, so this happens sometimes to me. You've got to split the bill. Okay? So what you don't know here is what the bill is. So I'll pick B. I'll let B represent the bill and we're gonna split the bill evenly four ways. So that split, we're dividing. We're dividing that bill up four equal ways. So I have B divided by four. That is how I just modeled that real world situation. All right, example four. Okay, I know you saw all those words and a lot of times in math, you see the word problem and it's like, ugh, I, I don't even want to bother with it. But just take a deep breath, take it in chunks, 
and they're always easier that way. Just take your time and work your way through it, and it's not going to be too bad at the end. All right, so let's look. <sighs> Got our deep breath. In a football game, a team earns seven points for a touchdown and one point for a field goal. Okay. Write an expression to represent the total number of points a team earns. All right, so I read my way through it. Now let's break it down and get this expression going. You actually have two unknowns in this situation. That's how this one's a little bit different because you see that the team earns seven points for a touchdown, but I don't know how many touchdowns they've made, right? And they earned one point for a field goal, but I don't know how many field goals they've made. So those are my unknowns in this case. I'm gonna let T represent the number of touchdowns. And I'm gonna let F represent the number of field goals. These are my variables because I don't know what they are. They're unknown. But what I do know is that the team earns seven points for each touchdown. Okay, so seven for each, you're multiplying there. And then I've got one point for a field goal. So I get one point for each field goal. And you've translated that expression. You just wrote one and it modeled that situation. Okay, I promise it wasn't too bad, was it? Just break it down. All right, so now you've got four examples to try. Go ahead and hit pause. Take your time and work your way through these, and then we'll get back together and we'll compare our answers. All right, let's see how we match up. Six years older than Ray. Let me switch to my little arrow tool so I can move these answer boxes. There you go, R plus six. Now maybe you picked a different variable, and you're not wrong if you did. Any variable, you may have picked uh, Q to represent R if you want, represent Ray if you wanted to. That's up to you. Or maybe you wrote six plus R. You're still right. Either one's right. Okay. One half the amount of Jacob's car. All right. So I have one half times J because I let J represent Jacob's car or the cost of his car. Four dollars less than Samantha spent. All right, I've got S minus four, because I let S represent what Samantha spent. All right, in a baseball league, teams are ranked using points. A team earns five points for each win and two points for each tie. Write an expression to represent the total number of points a team earns. And here's what I got. I let the W represent the number of wins, and then I let the T represent the number of ties. So five W plus two T. All right. Okay, guys, you just modeled real-world situations, and I hope you saw the connection to translating expressions. They're that, not that much unlike each other, so if you can handle one, I bet you can handle the other. All right, hope to see you back here soon. See you next time.